Oh man, the pull hook, extremely frustrating. You feel like you're making a good swing, you hit the ball, it's nice and solid, takes off like a rocket, but when you look up, it's already going left and hooking even farther left. It's extremely frustrating. I'm gonna teach you what's the real science behind the pull hook, and you're actually probably been taught the wrong thing. You're actually not swinging too far to the left. I'll get to the science behind this so you guys can fix this once and for all and eliminate the hooks from your game. Let's go and get started. The double cross, one of the most widely misunderstood shots in golf. A lot of times when we, we make a swing, we hit a hook just like we did on the flight scope there. We look up, the ball's already a little bit left and then it's turning harder and harder left. Well, the idea is that we think we're swinging over to the top, right to left. We can actually see the flag right in front. That would be our target for this example. It feels like we're swinging over the top, right to left, the face is closed. So it's starting left and going even farther left. But if we take a look at the flight scope numbers, you'll see on that video that I just took, the path or the direction my club is swinging, I kind of have that represented with this, this U-shaped U uh, PVC thing. And this is gonna be tilted out to the right. So now my path is going to the right of the flag. My face was pointing pretty much at the flag. So my face was pointing 0.9 to the right of the flag. And because I have a difference in these, the ball is always gonna to start to the face, which was at the target, and it's gonna curve away from the path. The path was right, the ball curved left. But by the time I looked up, you know, I've already swung, and by the time I looked up, my ball's already 100 yards down the range, my ball's already left of the target. So it feels like I swung left, when in reality, I swung right. Now, the, as that happens, a lot of times people will tell you, your playing partners will tell you, you're coming over the top, you're double crossing the ball, you need to swing a little bit more to the right, excuse me, you need to swing more to the right to, to solve that. The path is already to the right, you're going even farther to the right and you just start hooking and double crossing even more. So we have this set up to the right. What we need to do is to get this set up straight with our target so that everything's coming through nice and straight. The face is straight, the path is straight, and that's gonna solve our issue. Let me show you exactly what you need to do. All right, so I'm gonna hit a shot here. I'm gonna give you a feeling, an example that's gonna feel like you're going to the left. In reality, like we just talked about, your, your club is swinging to the right, your face is closing in relationship to that path, and the ball is starting at the target and hooking dead to the left. So what we have to do is basically the opposite of that. We have to get the opposite feeling, and that's gonna straighten it out. Ideally, our club will be going perfectly straight, our face will be straight, and we'll get that nice straight ball flight. The shortest distance between two points is a straight line. You're gonna get the most accurate and the longest drives if you can hit the ball straight. So when I set up here, again, I'm gonna to go to this blue flag straight up in front. You can see here, this would be basically parallel with that, that blue flag. Now, if I'm gonna exaggerate and really try to feel like I'm getting that slice, the first thing that I wanna do, I wanna go ahead and open up my stance a little bit. Now, we're only gonna do this for a short period of time as we're working through these drills, and then we can square it back up. But if I'm double crossing, I'm snap hooking, I gotta get myself out of it immediately on the next hole and make sure that I can get a little bit of a fade on that shot. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set up with my feet slightly to the left, and I'm gonna have my face feeling like it's pointing at the target. So I wanna feel like my right hand, if you can imagine the palm of my right hand is coming down to the ground. This would be forward shaft lean. As I make contact with the ball, my right hand is gonna feel like it's facing at the target. And as I come on through, my right hand is gonna feel like it's moving directly to the target. So my path, the direction I'm swinging is gonna be left but I'm gonna feel like my hand is moving straight down toward the target. That's a very good feeling to hit a bit of a fade. So I'm gonna go ahead and make a few swings doing this, and I really wanna see that ball turn over right to left. So my stance is left, I'm gonna feel like I'm swinging to the left, and my right hand is gonna feel like it's working straight down to the target. There we go, so I really exaggerated that one, started that one way to the left, really started to fade that one back. And what I would do is I would keep on hitting a couple shots until I got that ball to start pretty much at the target and then have a bit of a fade. So that was a little bit exaggerated. That means my stance was just a little bit too open. Now I'm gonna to tone that down a little bit and I'm gonna feel like I get a much smaller fade. Let's try that out. There we go, that was about a five yard fade, just started to the left of the target and now it's turning back over. Again, I'm gonna adjust how much open my stance. I'm gonna feel like my face is kind of holding open and I'm gonna hit kind of a soft fade out there you may lose a little bit of distance right off the bat, but you're gonna immediately get rid of that snap hook because we're doing the opposite 
of what we were before. Now, as you get more and more comfortable with that, we got to find that medium zone where instead of aiming left, I'm going to aim straight. And instead of feeling like a hold open the face, I can go ahead and start to let that face roll on over a little bit to get that nice straight shot. So if you do that, work with your feel. If you start to slice the ball, it's okay to turn the hands over a little bit more. If you get the ball starting to left and slicing back, that's what we want to do immediately. And then we can work it down from there. So work with those two feelings. Get about 100 practice swings, aiming left, path of the hand moving down the target line. That's going to allow you to get that, that hook immediately away, and then you can play better golf from there. Good luck to you guys. I'll see you all soon. Hi guys, I hope you all really enjoyed this video. If you did, I got a fantastic bonus for you. I'm going to talk about the number one lag mistake that I see. So if you want to build massive amounts of lag in your downswing and release that lag to get tons of speed, I'm going to go over the number one lag mistake in a preview of a video that's going to pop up. If you want to see that entire video, just click the link that pops up in your screen or the one down below in the description. If you're on a mobile device or a tablet, you'll just click the button that drops down in the description and then click the link from there. If you have any questions at all, post them in the comments. I'll try to answer all those myself. And then click the thumbs up button if you enjoyed this video. That really helps us out, helps us to grow the channel, keep giving you guys more videos. Also remember to subscribe, that way you'll see our latest videos. So good luck to you guys, play well, go out there and rip them. I'll see you in the lag video. Hi guys and welcome back. I'm Clay Ballard and in today's video we're going to talk about one of the absolute worst drills for creating lag. It's a very common drill that I see and in this drill what we're going to do is we're going to set the wrist very early to create an angle of lag and then we're going to try to hold this throughout the swing. It's one of the worst things that you can, that you can do to build lag. I'm going to talk about the science behind why this is the case and I'm also going to give you a great drill to help you improve your lag all in this video. Let's go ahead and get if started. I do it this way versus holding that position. Exact same thing happens when we're building lag in the golf swing. So what we want to do is throughout the swing, I want to have a very low and wide takeaway. So I'm not going to set my wrist early at all. If you look at a lot of the top players, you look at uh, Adam Scott, very wide takeaway, not very much wrist set at all. You look at Roy McIlroy, look at Tiger Woods. All these players are using a wide takeaway and not getting very much wrist set so that later in the swing, as we start down, we can increase this wrist set and we're really only gonna max out this angle of lag for a split second in the downswing. Okay, so a three-step drill here. Now, as we get started with this, I want to remind you that the fulcrum in this golf club for getting a massive amount of lag is right at the end of the golf club. This is where I want my hinge point to be. I wanna use the full length of this club to build lag and then release lag.